Hey, what's going on everyone? This is Devils41, or actually I'm going to be updating my name, I'll be changing it to AZM3DIA or AZ Media, um, just to kind of follow you know, what I'm doing with the car and also to align with my um, Instagram uh, handle as well. So I'm gonna be changing that, changing the name and updating a little bit within the channel. You know, mainly today, what I wanted to talk to you guys about was, uh, you know, why did I pick the M3? Why did I choose it over an F80? Um, you know, when I was looking at some of the cars, if you've been watching some of the other videos that I've had, it's kind of between going with an F80 uh, competition, either a 2018 plus, or, um, you know, actually going with a brand new G80. So I'm gonna kind of take you down a little bit of the road on why I chose the G80, why the G80, you know, over an F80. Um, you know, I do understand that there's a natural, you know, evolution of things. The G80 is obviously going to be a better platform. Uh, but, you know, regardless to say, this was something that, you know, I, I didn't take lightly that I, I definitely went into, um, you know, kind of, kind of my research and looking at what were the main differences. Why did I want to go with the F80 over a G80? And, you know, these were some of the reasonings kind of for it. And what are the main differences between that uh, F80 and the G80? So uh, there's kind of three main breakdowns really on, on um, you know, why I thought and really was leaning towards the G80 over the F80. Uh, first and foremost, I'm kind of a track guy. I like doing autocross. I like doing circuit type of racing. So for me, you know, making a high amount of power, you know, fast in a straight line really isn't important to me. It's really about uh, being quick when it comes into the corners, you know, being able to throw the car and having it actually be stable and actually use all that traction and the ability to not have to worry about the engine as well as when you're throwing it in a corner. A little bit of background, I did have an M235i before, I was looking at tracking it, uh, but part of the issues with having the non-M cars or an m light car is yes, they are a little bit quicker, you know, than your standard kind of road cars, but uh, part of the problem with it is it's not really set up for racing. So part of the issues with the N55 was it did suffer from oil starvation. So you do get to see that when you get onto a track. What happens is, you know, if you have long sustained G turns or anything, you don't have that oil circulating all of the oil. Uh, so you'll actually, uh, you, you had guys in the N55 platform that actually would spin rod bearings because they would actually deal with the oil starvation. But you really didn't see that on the S55 because it did have the extra sump and extra pump in there. So you didn't see that with the S55. But uh, that being said, so that was kind of the reason why I was leaning towards going with an actual M car because I wanted something out of the box that I didn't want to have to mess with, tinker with or anything along those lines. Really what it came down to was kind of three factors for, um, you know, the G80 over the F80. Uh, and, you know, those, those, those three factors really came down to, um, you know, the platform and the evolution of racing that kind of went into it. The engine, obviously, uh, with the S58 over the S55. And then as well as some of the technology that was in the car as well. Um, so, you know, why not an F80 if I'm not a street line, you know, kind of circuit guy? The S55 is a very, very good platform. Platform. The F80 is a very, very good platform. Uh, some of the drawbacks that I did have, uh, you know, with the S55 were obviously the crank hub. Some people say it's blown out of proportion. Some people say it's not. You know, it was something that I wasn't willing to gamble with. Um, you know, I do like to modify my car, so it was something probably eventually down the road I would put a tune on it. Um, you know, it wasn't something that I wanted to deal with. You know, to shell out about three to four grand just to get something fixed that should have been fixed in the factory. Some guys say that you may not run into any issues. I've got friends that are full bolt-on that have not run into you know any issues whatsoever with it so it really just depends really with that engine it's it's very very torquey so if you look at you have a lot of guys that have traction issues and being that it's a rear wheel drive only, um, you really have to get really sticky, you know, large tires in the back uh, to really get rid of any of that, um, uh, you know, kind of torquiness or surge, um, you know, but it, you, you do run into problems when it comes to actual, um, you know, traction with the S55, it's more of a raw engine. The other uh, uh, things obviously that, that went into kind of my decision making within the F80 was, you know, looking at the DC transmission versus a, a ZF8, you know, DCT is going to be a little bit more raw. Uh, you have a dual clutch transmission. It's going to be faster than the ZF. Uh, but to be honest with you, I've had the ZF before. I feel like it's just fast enough, uh, but I think it's able to handle the power well, um, you know, especially with an X drive. Um, additionally, you know, they did pull the X drive system off of the, the G80 straight from um, the, you know, M5 competition. So, you know, it's a proven uh, all wheel drive platform. You know, it's a proven platform. It's not like it's something brand new that they were just kind of slapping into the unit. Um, so that was part of 
the reason for it, but obviously the biggest thing that came down to it was the drivetrain, uh, you know, was the engine with the S58. Uh, I felt like BMW did a lot of uh, uh, research into this engine. We look at the B58 and what it's actually doing. Uh, you look at the S58 is just an evolution of that. So when you look at the S55 versus the N55 platform, you actually see that about 80% of the parts are interchangeable between the two, uh, where you have the S58 and B58, about 80% of those parts are going to be brand new. So only about 20% is shared between the B58 and S58, just showing you know what they actually did with that development and to prove that it is for a motorsports racing. So some of the things they did with the S58, uh, they lowered the compression ratio to a 9.3 to one. Uh, so with this lower compression ratio, you can run a lot more boost and not really have to worry about it with a higher compression engine. Uh, so with that, what they did with the S55 was where they made a couple different changes to it. Uh, you still have, a I believe it's the you know forged internals. You also have a new you know 3D printing um, actually done on the cylinder head, for example. So they do that for cooling and for airflow as well, uh, but also to make it very strong and rigid. It is a closed deck design, very similar to the S55. It is a water to air intercooler as well, uh, but part of the uh, kind of polarizing effect that people had with the new car was um, you know they took a lot of those cooling and they put it in front of the crash bar. You know they moved a little bit forward. Now, because of this, you have the air that's able to come straight into the front grill, that's able to cool everything. Uh, so you're not having to worry about it going to, to displace around that crash bar where you had on the F80. So you have a better cooling in the G80s because of that large grill. Uh, so that's really the reason they were doing it. And that was kind of the reason why when I looked at it, I was like, hey, you know, I understand why BMW is actually doing it from this side of it. So, you know, this is why I'm actually going to go with this platform. Uh, S58 is a very, very capable engine. You know, it's, it's forged internals revving to about 7200 rpms so you know bmw actually spent a lot of time and investment into their motorsports arm i felt like uh you know over the past 50 years that the m motorsports been around uh you know they've they've invested a lot into the racing side and they invested a lot of that back into their cars as well especially on the m side uh so when you look at the traction control that they put into it when you look at any of the electronics any of the engine components anything like from the cooling side a lot of it comes from their motorsports m division and that's really what I was wanting where something that I can be able to take out to the track, throw it around and, and be able to drive it home and not really have to worry about it. Uh, so that was really the reason for going with, you know, the F80 uh, or sorry, the G80 over the F80. You know, nothing against the F80 and the platform, but I felt like the G80 was just that better evolution of that platform. It's a little bit more planted. And, you know, I'm really excited to see what I can actually do with this car now. Now that we've actually talked about why I chose the uh, G80 over the F80, I wanted to give you guys a little bit of an update on the actual channel. So um, I did end up getting rid of the E46, uh, you know, with the space that I had in my house from the way that my garage uh, and driveway was kind of shaped. There really wasn't a good place for it. My HOA kept giving me angry love letters um, because I was parking on the street and they don't actually allow you to park in the street. So yeah, so I ended up selling it. You know, the car's gone, so but I do have the G80. Um, I did sign up for autocross on December 10th. So I'll bring you guys a video of kind of the first autocross. So that being said, because I did sign it up for autocross, that means that I did do the break-in service for it about a week ago, uh, right before Thanksgiving. So uh, pretty excited about that. Uh, definitely. Uh, did a couple of pulls, which I'll show you guys right now. Um, and that was the first pull that I ever had actually done in the car. Uh, but, but it was definitely exciting, um, you know, to be able to put it down the full potential of the car. X drive is definitely something that uh, I will say, you know, with cold weather is definitely needed in these types of cars uh, because if you have cold tires, obviously we know, you know, cold tires and full power is never a uh, fun time. Uh, yeah, so we'll go ahead and wrap up the video there. Uh, I'll probably be doing some more videos, some more vlog style videos for you guys uh, going around, going to some car meets. I do have a car meet coming up this week uh, where I am going in it is for uh, foster care. So I'll probably be bringing you guys a video from that and just doing more of a vlog style. Um, hope you guys like it. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any reasoning of why maybe I should have picked an F80 over a G80, uh, you know, go feel free to drop it in the comment. I'd love to have the discussion and love to hear from, uh, you know, other BMW fanatics and other M fanatics as well. Uh, like I said, I wasn't talking down the platform by any means. Uh, I just think that the, the S58 and the G80 
platform is just, you know, kind of that next step up, that next evolution of it. So thank you guys. This is AZ41 Media uh, signing off for this video, uh, but thanks for stopping by. Be sure to subscribe and like as well. So thank you guys and we'll see you in the next one.